What is up everyone and welcome to a multiple unboxing box unboxing of boxes. Um, as you guys know, my setup has changed around quite a bit. If you have not seen the video that I posted two videos ago, I think, where I was putting the MacBook Pro into my main setup and setting all this up, um, then go back and check that out. But basically this video is an unboxing of all the extra stuff that I need to go with my MacBook Pro, plus a couple of extras that I've been wanting. I can't remember exactly what I've ordered, but it'll all come flooding back to me once I open it. This is things to basically get me up and running with this laptop how I would be up and running with a desktop. Um, because as you guys know, especially on the new Retinas, the ports are quite a bit more limited than what you'd have on something like a desktop. And this is all mainly about ports and functionality of the setup. So without further ado, let's dig in. Now the primary box is from Amazon, but I do have a couple of things in here. I think I know what this is. So in here we have, and I wasn't expecting to get so many, so that's quite cool. I have these. Now you guys have probably seen these before. They're notoriously expensive, but I managed to find a cheap set on Amazon. Um, and they're basically little sticky round things that you can put cables through to stop cables falling around. Now, when you have um, a setup like this, it's annoying because if you want to take your MacBook away and you unplug all the cables, then they just fall down the back of the desk and get lost and it's a pain. I've got them hooked up with cable ties at the moment, but that looks horrible. So the plan is, is to stick a few of these around the Griffin elevator stand to hold the cables in place. And by the way, this is not just an unboxing video. I will be setting all of this up in the video as well so you guys can see. I believe this was like two quid for these 12 which is awesome because if you get them from like um, a shop around here like locally and don't buy them online they're literally like six or seven pounds for just a six pack but they are multicolored but I prefer black anyway so that's those I wasn't expecting those to arrive that quickly they were estimated to arrive next week so I'm glad they arrived as I completely destroy the box. You may or may not be able to tell, but I've sharpened my knife because I had a lot of requests to do that. Because it was getting a bit tricky to get into these boxes. Now, I have spent quite a lot of money over the past couple of days. It all needed to be spent, but it's not really this stuff that's put me in a big spending position. This stuff was, when you add it all together, fairly expensive, um, but what really set me back was Apple Care. As you guys know, it's coming up to a year of owning my MacBook Pro, so I decided to buy Apple Care, whapped in my serial number, bought it, and now I'm covered until 2017, which is absolutely great, until uh, November 2017. So I'm really excited about that. Or oh, is it October? October something. Anyway. So, I've been spending quite a bit of money, but it was something that I needed to do. Now, there are quite a few things in here, but not as much as I was expecting. I think I'm still waiting for a couple of things from other places. So, first off, we have what looks to be a Firewire cable. Yeah, this is Firewire 800 to Firewire 400. My audio mixer is a Firewire 400 mixer, and um, the Firewire adapters they come in Thunderbolt to Firewire 800. So instead of using one of those bulky um, changeover adapters on the adapter end, I decided to just get a cable that was 800 to 400. Now I've got multiple ones of these, but they're in use with things like the server shelf and that, so I needed another one. Nice length, I believe this is 1.5 or two meters, so that is always good. Moving along, we have a third-party um, USB 3.0 to Ethernet adapter, which is apparently compatible with Macs. So what we'll do actually is put these things to one side and then I'll get you a closer shot all nice and focused when we open this lot. But I wanted this because I want to be going over Ethernet. I do a lot of transferring to and from the servers. And as you guys know, I have a gigabit switch, so I get quite a nice lot of speed. But my Wi-Fi network limits that down to uh, 10, 100 speeds and even slower. So yeah, I wanted the Ethernet. Um, next up, we have the official Apple Thunderbolt to Firewire rip-off adapter. Yes, you can get a third-party one for about £10 cheaper, but you know what? I was thinking, let's get the little Apple logo and unbox a little Apple product, because why the hell not? And along the same lines, we have the Apple USB Super Drive. But don't worry, guys. This normally retails for around £60. I managed to bag it on Amazon really, really cheap. Um, so you know what Amazon is like. Sometimes you can get stuff cheap. Um, and yeah, 
I managed to get these for quite a good deal, but they're still fairly expensive for what they are. But who cares? There we have it, the super drive. Um, you guys might be thinking, well, Tom, your Hackintosh didn't have a super drive. You are correct, but what I had with going with the Hackintosh was a USB to IDE adapter, and I was using the optical drive out of my Mac Pro, um, sort of just underneath the desk, and it was a really clunky setup. I was going to get um, one of those icy box five and a quarter inch external USB 3.0 drive bays and put a Blu-ray burner in there, a full five and a quarter inch Blu-ray burner, um, but I don't have the money to do that right now, so I thought, you know what, let's get the Apple Super Drive, let's cause some, uh, let's cause some discussions in the comment section down below, why the heck not, yes, you can get Super Drives much cheaper, that are probably faster, blah, 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 whatever, I don't care. Next thing, we have this, um, made by the same people that make the USB to Ethernet adapter, which is cool. I believe you pronounce it Anker, A-N-K-E-R, so I guess it's Anker. This is a 7-port uh, USB 3.0 hub, and this isn't just any hub, this is a powered hub, and it provides 36 watts of power, so it's like a powered hub on steroids, which is great. Um, so this thing actually weighs quite a bit, there's a transformer in here obviously to provide power. Um, USB 3.0, really quick, what does it say? Windows 98 ME 2000 XP Vista 7 Mac OS 9.1 and above. Can you believe that? That's probably not in focus, we'll take a look at it closer later. But yeah, this is a really good USB hub, quite a popular one as well, I've seen it dotted around online. So, there's that. And last but not least is something that you guys may see as a little bit confusing, because I've already got one, but here is another orange case for my MacBook Pro. Now this one isn't actually looking as orange as my other one, it's a different make. Um, I wanted to try one that was meant to be a bit lighter, so I got this. Reason being was because I've had the other one for about a year. They're cheap cases, they don't last very long, um, so it's got a couple of cracks in it, that kind of thing. I decided to go for this and I'll be replacing the case in the MacBook Pro. I probably won't do that in this video, I'll probably put the case to one side, this will be more about the setup. But what we'll do is I'll change the angle down to that close um, in focus desk angle and we'll unbox some of this stuff. Um, ultra slim cover for all MacBook series, dress your MacBook needs. This may be okay, the feet feel quite a bit different to the other one. I'm hoping this is okay. It looks less orange. It looks kind of like a kind of pretty dark colour, to be honest. But anyway, let's put that to one side. Let's change the angle and take a look at what we've got. Since it's hot off the press, let's take a look at this USB hub. Got a bit of sellotape in there. Ooh, look at that action, guys. Look at that action on the knife. Perfect. Okay, so it's not the prettiest thing in the world. We'll take a look at that in a second. Let's get the power adapter out first. Here it is. It's a power brick, so I prefer a power brick to a um, to a transformer on the plug end. So you get a figure of eight cable, get a nice small plug, and then a power brick that you can tuck away somewhere. Of course, the USB 3.0 lead with one of those quite big USB connectors on that side. We have some thing. Don't want that. Close that. Let's get this out and take a little look. Now, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it will be functional and the reviews are great, so if I can, if I can, yeah, let's do this. Let's get it out. Okay, so one complaint before I've even taken it out fully is the fact that it's glossy. No big deal, glossy plastic, it is what it is. On the back, we've got the USB connection, the power input, and then on the front we've got seven lovely powered USB 3.0 ports and that will be living over there by my MacBook, providing me with all the USB 3.0 goodness that I need for my setup. So there's that, along with its um, power cable, power brick, and USB 3.0 cable. So, moving the box aside, let's move on to the little USB to Ethernet adapter. Next slide. Can we get a slide happening? It looks like we can, yes we can. Pull that away. This is made by the same people, and check that out. Dead simple, little bit of documentation in there, and this is exactly what it says it is. But, very nice guys, very nice. Metal, this is actually metal, so there's the gigabit ethernet connection. There's the USB 3.0, so this is one of the things that will be dangling out the front of this. That's one thing about having a laptop um, setup versus a desktop setup. With a desktop, you can put all your cables out the way. Um, with this, 
it's all going to be showing. I was going to get two hubs and have one hidden under the desk for things like this and then one on the desk for other things, but um, money became a thing and I didn't go for it in the end. So I don't care. I'll try and make it look as neat as possible, but functionality is the most important thing at the moment. So this should work out of the box with OS X. Apparently it does. All the reviews say it's good. So that is that. Gigabit Ethernet to USB adapter. Fully unboxed, made by the same people as the USB hub. Good start. So let's take a little closer look at this Firewire cable. I showed you earlier, but it's very simple. Firewire 800 will be coming out of my adapter on the Thunderbolt end and going straight into the mixer via Firewire 400 on the other end. Now, if you get the 800 to 400 jumper adapter, it's like a block of plastic. What that basically means is that's gonna hang out of the adapter on your Thunderbolt port, putting a lot more strain on the port itself. Now, strain relief can be achieved with careful placement of things like this, and I'm very, very interested in not bending or damaging any of the ports in my MacBook Pro by having heavy cables getting pulled on them. However, it was very attractive to go for this option because it's less adapters, and sometimes those adapters aren't that, aren't firm, you know, it doesn't, they don't click in all the way and stuff like that, especially with Firewire. They're a bit of an odd connection, but there it is, Firewire cable. Now, I thought I'd show you guys these two packets, but seeing as I'm making a video, I might as well show you what they are. Let's take one out. They're basically rubbery plastic. You peel off the back and they've got adhesive there. And then let's do a little demonstration. Let's untwangle this. Nope, I'm re-twangling it. It needs to be untwangled. All in the name of demonstration. Let's undo the cable. This is, of course, in a hypothetical kind of way, Plonked on the desk like that, it's stuck, it's not going anywhere, and then, ping, like this, you put your cable through it, and uh, it holds it in, in place, kind of. So, yeah, that's that. That's my plan, anyway. I might need to use quite a few of them to achieve what I want, but they will be there, and I can use them at my leisure on my setup. So as you guys can probably tell, I've saved the Apple stuff for last. Here we have the Thunderbolt 2 Firewire adapter. Let's break into this. now. What is my opinion on the pricing of these adapters? Um, it's kind of hard to say your opinion on matters like this without starting some kind of uh, flame war down in the comment section. But what I will say is Apple know how to get away with charging this amount. And look, I am fully aware that there's cheaper options out there and I bought this one. Why the hell I bought it, I don't know. I can't justify it at all. But here it is and I'm ruining the packaging already. But there we go, I'm in. Regardless of what you think of the pricing, and by the way guys, these are these are roughly £20. Regardless of what you think of the pricing, people pay it. And you know, the packaging is nice, the quality is there. And there it is, that is literally all it is. Thunderbolt on that side, Firewire 800 on that side. Quite a stiff cable to it, so it hangs out the side of the machine like that. And of course I will be gathering my Firewire cable and it plugs in just like that. And that gives me Thunderbolt to Firewire 400. Easy. Lovely. If you see what I mean about laptop setups being a bit more bulky, this is what I mean. Let's move that to the side. Move this to the side. And get on to, I think, the most expensive part. I think this was more expensive than the USB hub um, by a decent little margin. Let's, let's make a, an incision along there. That one was slightly more successful. Let's dig in. Now I'm not expecting much. I'm expecting plain Apple packaging. Literally just the super drive and the USB cable in there. I've never seen one of these in person, so curiosity was uh, a big contributing factor to buying one of these. There you have it, guys. There it is. Oh, right, yeah, and it's hardwired. I forgot that it was hardwired. Oh, look, why am I doing that? This is Apple packaging, look for the tabs. One thing I will say is there's a really nice weight to it. This is a very, very weighty product. Like a lot of the thing is with the, the cheapo um, little USB powered optical drives is they're little plasticky things that slide around everywhere. This is undeniable quality, which is great. So I've actually messed that up. Can't rewrap it, that's okay. There is some documentation in there, blah, blah, blah. Sorry guys, hitting the camera. There we go, that's that. The Apple SuperDrive unplugged and out of the way. Now I believe this is only USB 2.0. I believe this is older than 
when the three is this still the same design as when they originally brought the MacBook Air out, the first MacBook Air? I'm not too sure, but whatever it is, this thing has got a weight to it. I can tell you that for a fact right now. It's got a lovely, lovely weight to it. Nice sort of medium sized USB cable, little protecty thing on the USB there. Um, so yeah, I'm pleased with all this stuff guys, it's all looking nice. What I'm going to do now is integrate it all into the setup. I'm primarily hoping to hide the majority of this junk underneath and to the side here with these other devices that I already have that need to be integrated into the USB 3.0 hub. Um, but when I next cut to the next clip, you guys should see a setup that is much more refined than it is right now with all of these extra peripherals, accessories and good fun toys to play with. Little bit of shaky footage here guys to show you as soon as I start to get doing this setup, you know, setting it up, I can't speak. Um, I literally thought that this would fit under there, but as you can tell, it's literally like just a couple of mil off. So that is so annoying. Like really, really annoying. I wanted USB ports available there. So I could, you know, like if it was sitting under there, it'd be really easy because I could have all of the cabling routing from the back going into the ports at the front, yet I could still access them from the front and I could use the little cable tidy things. I was gonna stick them along the sides of the Griffin elevator here to, to guide the cables back. Um, but I'm gonna have to rethink this scenario. Also, it can't really be part of this stack because it can't go on top of the toaster, obviously, and it can't go underneath because it's just it's just not solid enough. It's not got a big enough surface area, so I'm gonna have to rethink this. This um, these this is made by the same company as the Ethernet adapter, like I keep saying, but the, the quality difference is worlds apart. This is metal, really nice quality. This is plastic, light, and it doesn't even have rubber feet on the bottom. So. Hopefully it functions fine, um, but so far not impressed by the form factor. So guys, I'm going to be doing a bit of rough camera work for a second. Um, things aren't finalised, this isn't the last clip, but I, I thought I'd show you my progress. Now things are going generally well, a couple of things that didn't quite work out. Um, the firewire cable is not quite long enough, as you can see. Um, I can push that down a bit more, there we go. But it's kind of short, so because of that, the firewire, the Thunderbolt to firewire adapter is not part of the sort of nice controlled cable environment underneath the Griffin elevator. It's kind of going off rogue on its own down there, but right now that really doesn't matter and I'm not gonna rectify it. I could extend it if I wanted to. I've got a Firewire 400 extension, but it's way under the desk with all the other cabling and I just can't be bothered to pick it out. Just like I can't be bothered to pick out the KVM or any of that stuff I'm not using anymore because I'll be moving soon. There's absolutely no point. I'd do it otherwise, but yeah. So all I'm gonna do is put a little black blob thing there to hold that cable in place. Um, and as you can see, this side we're pretty much laughing. In terms of the setup, sorry guys, my stool is so creaky. In terms of the setup, as you guys can see, I finalized on a sort of way that everything is sitting together that works quite nice. Um, the USB hub is sitting on top of my three terabyte drive. That's a time machine drive. That's got the, all the Mac Pro data on it that I access. And um, yeah, it sits as a nice little platform for the USB hub. As you can see, I've got two free ports on the USB hub. That first port is taken up by the hard drive dock. Reason it's not lit up above is because the dock is off. If I switch the dock on right there, you guys are able to see that that first port now lights up, but obviously you don't need it on constantly. Um, it's just a waste. So um, under there looks fairly neat. One thing that I'm really proud of is the gigabit ethernet adapter is just sitting on the side there. Um, you know, it's not the neatest thing in the world, but it's okay. The reason this cable is so free, this is the cable going to my media drive. This is my iTunes one terabyte portable drive. Um, I do sometimes unplug that and take that places, so that's why the cable is free. The Creative X mod is not plugged into this hub. It's actually plugged into the USB 2.0 hub, which is on my monitors. Um, the Apple Super Drive is under there. We'll come back to that in a second. It's gonna cause me some issues. Around there, you guys can see that that uh, black cable tidy blob that I'm not using on the back. That was reserved for the Firewire cable, but I'm not gonna be using that anymore, so um, I may use that for the charger, but I kind of leave the charger floating wherever it wants to go. Um, as you can see, the mini display port and the USB cable, That this USB is going to the 2.0 hub, um, so it's dedicated to the, the monitors, which is running things like the keyboard, mouse, CreativeX mod, and the two side USBs here for like pen drives and stuff. Um, and yeah, this side is just HDMI and the USB 3 cable going to the USB 3 hub. And as you can see, they're both arranged nicely back there as well. 
It's not perfect, actually, looking at it on camera now. It's pretty really not perfect, but it is what it is. Now, I do have a little bit of a problem. Um, as you can see, the Apple SuperDrive is plugged in. It is plugged in right there, and you can see it is lit up above. But if I grab a CD, let's just grab a blank disc, and I put it in, check this out. Okay, nothing, absolutely nothing. So let me show you something for a second. Here in System Profiler, we have quite a complicated little setup. Um, reason being is the way that these USB 3.0 hubs achieve backwards compatibility. So you've got to look at this um, for a little second to realize how things are being achieved. So basically um, you have the USB 3.0 high speed bus. That's internal in the computer going out to the hub which is in the monitors. Creative X mod is connected to the monitors, as well as hub in Apple Pro keyboard, Apple Pro keyboard hub, which is the second screen, USB PS2 optical mouse, okay, which makes total sense. Now, that is all of the USB port on that side of the machine. Now, coming up to the other side, we're still under USB 3.0 bus, okay, but you can see USB 2.0 hub. Now, if you look at this, we have USB 10, 100, 1000 LAN. That's our LAN adapter. We have Apple USB SuperDrive and USB 2.0 hub. Now, the reason these are listed here is because the USB 3 hub for backwards compatibility with USB 2 devices is telling my computer that it's a USB 2.0 hub. But it must do it in some kind of weird grouping because, as you can see, we've got the Apple SuperDrive there. That's a USB 2.0 device. And next to it plugged in is the LAN adapter. Now, I don't know if it groups it in groups of two or whatever. I'm going to have to look at the um, instructions. It shouldn't. But that means that the USB 3.0 LAN adapter is now running at USB 2.0 speeds. But if we go up to it and come down, you guys can see that... Hang on a second. Let's take a look. There we go. So we have speed on the Apple USB SuperDrive up to 480 megabits per second and 10 100 1000 LAN is the same thing speed up to 480 megs a second but if we go down to the other portion of the USB hub which has say blah, 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 where are we USB super speed bus 2 okay down here so it's actually coming up as um a separate bus which I find really really odd to be honest because the computer is almost grouping in these USB 2.0 devices with this bus but anyway here we have the separate one this is the one with the card reader and everything if we go down to something like my passport which is obviously on the USB 3.0 hub you can see that speeds when we go to speed up to five gigabits per second same with my my book up to five gigabits per second um, memory card reader internal under USB 3.0 up to five gigabits per second. But again, go back up to, um, where are we? Bluetooth, we don't want that. We want Apple SuperDrive, USB SuperDrive and up to 480 megs. But next to it, LAN adapter should be USB 3.0. And that is speed up to 480 megabits per second. Okay, interesting. It does actually say USB 3.0 on the label on the back. So it should be 3.0. It's blue. It should be 3.0, but it's not. That's not actually bothering me at the moment because, um, yeah, it's quicker than Wi-Fi at the moment. But I do not understand why some of these are coming up as 2.0 devices. And, of course, the Apple SuperDrive is not getting enough power. So if I unplug the SuperDrive, I'll show you what happens. As you guys can see, unplug the SuperDrive and it makes no difference whatsoever. Um, so it's not the SuperDrive that's throwing the hub into providing only 2.0 speeds for the gigabit adapter. No idea why it's doing it and it's actually annoying me. So whatever, it's just annoyed me more in the last couple of seconds while I was preparing this clip. Um, but let me plug that back in and show you what happens on the Mac. USB device needs power. Connect Apple USB SuperDrive to a USB port on this Mac. Now, this is very annoying because I know for a fact that this hub is capable of giving out enough power for the Apple SuperDrive. But, well, that's plainly obvious because the MacBook Air USB ports can power the SuperDrive. So this 36 watt overall um, USB hub, considering that um, all of the devices apart from the SuperDrive and the little hard drive, oh, and maybe the gigabit adapter as well, actually thinking about it. Okay, so, some of the hefty devices like this three and a half inch drive and the hard drive dock they're self-powered they've got power bricks but it's not happy with the amount of power that the super drive is receiving so i'm not sure what i should do i'm going to shuffle around the ports see what happens um it's annoying because i've already done all the cabling didn't think this would be a problem with buying such a high-end 
uh, USB hub or claims to be high-end and pretty expensive USB hub but if I take the CD again it will not take it but the interesting thing is the super drive makes a noise when you plug it in so very annoying annoyingly I unplugged everything out of the USB hub um, and plug the super drive straight into the side of the Mac and check this out it works so um, my thinking is because this super drive is demanding to dominate one port right there um, obviously this is a USB 3 port as well at the moment we've just got a 2.0 hub plugged into it as you can see disk reads fine there it is it's got the USB 2 hub plugged into it all I'm gonna do is plug the USB 3 hub into there and plug the USB 2 hub into there. Let me hook all of this up, tidy up the cables a little bit and see if that USB 3 hub can cope with these two hubs as well. Not ideal, I wanted to evenly distribute the hubs across the two ports but this super drive had to be connected to a port on the Mac which is, there's no excuse for that really. Um, I'm not sure why that's a thing. It, it should get enough power from a hub like that but I'm not going to argue, um, this is the kind of thing that you have to put up with with laptop setups. But, the main thing is, the Mac itself is working flawlessly. Because it's a Mac and I can rely on it and I've got Apple Care for it and I'm so chuffed. Whereas this thing would have crashed about three or four times by now. Um, but anyway, I'm just going to get over these few small hurdles and then I'll be set up fully ready to go. The only thing then is we have to figure out why the heck we're not getting 3.0 speeds through that gigabit adapter. But, we will see. Of course, it's a 10100 1 gigabit connector. USB 2.0 is limited to 480, so that'll obviously affect my transfers. But, uh... so guys, it shows how fussy that the Apple SuperDrive is. Um, I've got the USB 3 hub connected here, and connected to that USB 3 hub, I have this, the hard drive dock, not powered up at the moment. This cable goes to the USB hub in this monitor, powering the Creative X mod, my keyboard, and my mouse and another USB port goes out to this monitor which is powering another USB hub, nothing plugged into it at the moment so it's powering a load of USB 2 stuff two free ports this is my iTunes drive, my Time Machine drive and that is the Gigabit Ethernet adapter now this just goes to show how beefy that USB um, that USB hub is and how demanding that super drive is because not only do we have both the hard drive showing up we have internet through the gigabit adapter and of course as you can see creative x mod i have sound just fine coming through the usb hubs in these monitors also i thought i'd show you while i was here i know it's a bit blurry onyx that is my mixer coming up in the audio preferences as you can see mixers powered on and connected via firewire uh, with that thunderbolt adapter and um yeah now i'm going to go back into the usb section and show you how it's changed all of our problems have been rectified. This is a much better USB tree that now makes sense. So, let's take a look at it. Firstly, we have the USB 3 port on the right of the computer. That goes straight down to the 2.0 hub. 2.0 hub, hub, hub and Apple Pro keyboard, Apple Pro keyboard, hub, USB mouse, Creative X mod. Um, that's the first one. And then Apple USB Super Drive is, of course, um, hang on a second. It's interesting. Yeah, this is all correct, but it has a dynamic placement for all of these 2.0, 3.0 devices. That's how it that's how it handles backwards compatibility. Because this Apple USB Super Drive is actually dominating this entire port. But this should be down here, but it's not. But all I care about is the fact that we have USB 3.0 Super Speed Bus down here going to all of this down here, which importantly, whoops, is this USB. 10, 100, 1000 LAN, which is our adapter, up to 5 gigabits a second. So we now have proper, proper LAN on this system and everything is working great. So in summary, I've recently spent quite a lot of money on all of this kit and it was basically to extend my laptop so that it was as usable as a desktop. That means more USB ports, FireWire capability, driving multiple displays without the need to take up a load of your ports and of course CD burning, multiple hard drives, all of all of the above um, and I've succeeded. As you saw we had a couple of hiccups but it's nothing major at all. This is now my setup. This entire block you see here is almost like a desktop just sitting there on the corner of my desk. 
Now, it's not the most elegant setup, it's not the prettiest, because I do realise that everything is really cramped in together there, and maybe it's not to everyone's taste, but the functionality is, you know, obviously I'll test the reliability over time, but at the moment, the functionality is flawless. Touch wood. I hope it stays that way. We have basically achieved crazy amounts of high-speed USB 3.0 ports that give us proper gigabit ethernet through USB, as well as access to a load of hard drives, access to two sound cards, one small for output, one big for input, one of those being Firewire. We've got a docking station that we just, you know, use with a, a touch of a switch. We've got a super drive, did I mention that? Anyway, all I'm trying to say is, this is now a really expanded workstation and it will allow me to do everything that I need to do. Now, I could have made a couple of better decisions and maybe something like a dock for the MacBook would have been really good, but I like to use the triple monitor setup. I like to use the MacBook open. So having it open like this is really cool. And I think this setup is pretty sweet. I think it's probably one of the coolest things that you could achieve without using a dock. So I'm very pleased with the decisions that I've made, but of course, as always, I'm really eager to hear your opinion. So please post anything that you want to say or any questions or queries down in the comment section below. I read all comments even if I don't reply. So that is it. My MacBook Pro now straining under the heart of the setup. It's absolutely not, guys. It flies through everything. Someone asked me the other day, what's the graphics like running the display? Absolutely awesome. Uh, running the two displays, I should say, or the three, counting the internal one. Everything is just buttery smooth, and I'm very, very pleased with it. Um, and now, just in case I work this MacBook a little bit too hard and the thing blows up, at least I've got Apple Care to cover my ass. So this system, which is um, pretty much brand new that I bought, you know, Apple refurbished store, this system is going to be my very reliable Mac for the foreseeable future until I have time to troubleshoot my PowerHack G4, which is only marginally quicker than this computer. But I've talked far too much in this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I have no idea what you're in store for next, but now that I have a Firewire connection, I can guarantee pretty much that it's going to have better audio unless I hit a real snag along the way. So I hope you've all enjoyed, and as always, I will see you next time.